What's going on everybody? I hope you're all doing well. In this video, we're gonna be doing a day in the life review of the new iPhone 15 Plus. So I'm just gonna be going through a normal day's worth of activities while using this phone. So we're gonna go grab some lunch, gonna run some errands, do some work, go to the gym and work out, all while using this phone. And of course, we'll be evaluating and discussing the phone throughout the day. And of course, checking in on the battery life throughout the day. The 15 Plus is fully charged up to 100%. Just took it off the charger. And first stop of the day is getting some lunch. So we're gonna walk over to a local restaurant a few blocks down the street. I'll punch in the address in Apple Maps here. Only about a seven minute walk. And with lunch on the way, let's dive into some general info about the iPhone 15 Plus. So this iPhone is Apple's standard tier plus sized iPhone 15 model, meaning it's one of the base models of the iPhone 15, not one of the pro tier models. But it being the plus model, it does have a large 6.7 inch display, which is the same display size that the most expensive iPhone 15 Pro Max has. So Apple offers the very same display size options for both the standard and pro tiers of the iPhone 15, being a 6.1 inch display size model and a 6.7 inch display size model. You just get a more robust feature list and more advanced tech on the pro models, whichever size you pick of each tier. So with this iPhone 15 plus, you're basically just getting everything that the smaller entry level iPhone 15 is just with a larger display and a larger battery. Apple started offering these large screened standard tier iPhones last year with the 14 plus, And I like this strategy as it allows users who want a large screen to buy an iPhone that isn't the $1,100 iPhone 15 Pro Max. The 15 Plus here starts at $899, so that's $300 cheaper than the most expensive 15 Pro Max, and of course you still get that 6.7 inch large display. So the difference between the standard tier iPhones and the pro tier iPhones come down to a few areas. The three biggest areas are cameras, display, and design, and we'll touch on all three of these throughout this video. Starting off with the camera, of course the biggest difference you could see straight off the bat is the Pro models feature that additional telephoto lens where the standard models do not. But in terms of your day-to-day -day experience with the camera, unless you're literally a professional iPhone photographer, you're not really missing out on anything essential in terms of your day-to-day -day camera usage by going with one of the standard iPhones over one of the pro iPhones. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a handful of capabilities that the pro camera system has that the standard line doesn't, such as the new Tetra Prism telephoto lens on the 15 Pro Max, being able to shoot ProRes footage directly to an external hard drive, and being able to shoot log footage on the pro iPhones, just to name a few. But the reality is the average person definitely does not need these extra additions, and you get absolutely stellar photo and video quality with all the iPhone 15 models. As you can see here, here's a photo taken on the iPhone 15 Plus compared with the 15 Pro Max. I mean, the physical lenses in Apple's iPhones in combination with Apple's post-processing has just gotten so good over the last few years. And this year, Apple brought the new 48 megapixel camera sensor to the standard iPhone 15 and 15 Plus here. And this is really neat because because you're now able to get an optical grade telephoto zoom level on the standard tier iPhones without having the actual telephoto lens itself just because of that new 48 megapixel camera lens. So of course you have the 0.5 and 1x optical zoom levels, but you now get a new 2x optical zoom quality on the standard tier iPhones, which is really nice. And all right guys, next up, we're gonna head on over to my local Starbucks to grab some coffee and get some work done. And once again, I'm gonna plug in the address into Apple Maps, only about a six minute walk. And guys, in terms of the items that I carry around every day in my pockets, I like using a slim minimalist products that aren't bulky or too big. And lately I've been loving my new Armonica smart wallet, which allows me to carry around all the cards I need in this elegant folding design. It also has a dedicated AirTag spot, which is honestly my favorite feature as it gives me some peace of mind if I ever misplace my wallet. And this is all in a wallet that's very small and thin when folded up. And the Armonica smart wallet is made by Baza, who partnered up with me to sponsor this video. This wallet can fit 12 cards and you could also place folded cash inside the wallet. And everything is easily accessible and secured in place with a buckle so you never have to worry about anything falling out. And the thin and compact design makes it easily and comfortably pocketable. The Armonica comes in a variety of colors. My personal favorite is this turquoise option here. And if you don't currently own an AirTag, you're actually able to buy the Armonica with a brand new AirTag pre-installed if you'd like for your convenience. The Armonica is made in Italy and it's made entirely
entirely of plant-based material, not plastic. If you're interested in checking out the Armonica Smart Wallet, you can click on the link in the video description, and if you use that link, you'll get an exclusive 10% off your order. Or you can use coupon code ULTIMATE10 at checkout to take advantage of that 10% discount as well. Big thanks to Baza for sponsoring this video. and we're clocking into Starbucks here to work for a while. And quick battery check after using an accumulated 15 minutes or so of GPS and some regular sporadic usage in between, we're currently sitting at 93%. And as much as a lot of us aren't proud of it, procrastinating or killing time on your phone is probably a bigger part of your day than you'd like to admit. So I did my fair share of that throughout the three and a half-ish hours or so I spent at Starbucks here, just to account for how much battery, sporadic social media usage and general phone usage will consume in your day day-to-day -day life. So I kept loose track of how much time I spent using the phone and what I was doing. I spent an accumulated 40 minutes or so on Instagram and Twitter, and I stepped outside to take some photos to show you guys the quality of the camera on the 15 Plus. So that was about 17 minutes of camera usage. But of course, for the majority of these three and a half hours I've been at Starbucks here, the phone has just been asleep in standby while I've been working on my laptop. And stepping outside real quick, just to take those photos and videos on the 15 Plus. So to start off, here are some photos taken on the 15 Plus compared side by side with some photos taken on the 15 Pro Max. Just to really drive the point home that the 15 Plus takes fantastic photos and that for casual usage like this, you're hardly gonna notice any difference between the standard tier devices and the pro tier devices in the iPhone 15 lineup. In terms of just a point and shoot camera on a smartphone, every iPhone honestly for the past four years or so has been fantastic. You know, arguably some of the best on the market for people who just want to take a photo or video, maybe send it to some family or friends, and have it look just overall pretty good. Apple does do a lot of, you know, post-processing and kind of color modification to make the photos look a certain style that hardcore photographers probably wouldn't like, but for the average person like me and probably you who just want to take photos and you know have them look decent to either post on social media or again send to people i think you're going to love the camera quality on the iphone 15 plus Plus. and here are some videos shot on the 15 plus and the 15 pro max as well these are all shot at 4k 60 frames per second both impressively sharp. The camera is one of the areas that the iPhone has improved a lot in the past decade. You know, just thinking back to 10 years ago with the iPhone 5S, iPhone 6, the camera has just gotten so much better. It is honestly night and day. Now the iPhone 15 Plus has a max digital zoom level of 10X, while the iPhone 15 Pro Max has a max digital zoom of 25X as a result of, you know, that additional telephoto lens with the Tetra Prism design. And I'll show you some comparisons of those two in just a second here and you know that insane zoom level is definitely something that is pretty neat for the 15 pro max but again do you really need to zoom in that much in your photos and videos in your day-to-day -day life probably not again it is cool though it's nice to have but you can see for the photos that you're probably actually going to be taking it day to day here on the 15 plus compared with the 15 pro max they both look stellar, and honestly, I think you'd be hard-pressed to notice a difference with your naked eye. Again, unless you're just an absolute photography aficionado. But yeah, here is the comparison between the max digital zoom levels for both. And again, it's definitely noticeable, for sure. I mean, the iPhone 15 Pro Max does have insane... Uh, zoom capabilities. I know compared to some other Android phones, this is still not a whole lot, but first time we've had this degree of digital zoom on an iPhone. But again, back to the focus of this video, the 15 Plus, you can see, you know, it does fine with this as well. Again, you're probably not going to be zooming in this much in your day-to-day -day life, I would assume. But I'm curious to hear from you guys, is this level of zoom something that you would actually use in day-to-day -day life? And if so, what would you use it for? I hear from people that go to concerts frequently that maybe you're very far back and you like to get that up close, you know, concert video. But yeah, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And here's a front-facing camera test. Once again, 4K 60 on both. Um, and also, this is an audio test for both. Of course, I'll show the speaker icon or the device that the audio is currently coming from so you can get an idea of how it will sound when you're recording video as well. But anyways, heading back to work for a little bit longer, 
and also just throwing in, you know, a little bit of social media browsing on the 15 plus every once in a while. But anyways, before wrapping up here and heading over to the gym, quick battery check after several hours of standby and that accumulated social media usage and the camera usage, we're currently sitting at 83%. So not bad considering that, you know, we did spend almost 20 minutes. It was around 17 minutes using the camera, which is a very battery taxing task. And also that, you know, 40 minutes or so of social media usage. And before we head over to the gym, just a few more thoughts thoughts about the 15 plus I think Apple did a good job of bringing a lot of new features and changes to the standard tier iPhones this year, whereas last year they mostly focused on the Pro models in terms of new features and just kind of doing incremental changes on the standard iPhones. But this year, the standard iPhone 15 and 15 Plus here get the dynamic island pill-shaped cutout at the top of the screen instead of the notch design that was featured in the older iPhones, which is great to see. Of course, you now get all the software features that come along with it, including the ability to view and expand live activities from anywhere just at the top of the screen with that island. The biggest difference in terms of displays between the standard iPhones and the pro tier iPhones is the display refresh rate. So the display refresh rate basically means how many times the picture on the screen is able to refresh per second. And the higher that amount is, the smoother animations and scrolling will look. So the standard iPhones, of course, including the 15 Plus here, have a display refresh rate of 60 hertz, meaning the image on the display refreshes up to 60 times per second. And the Pro iPhones have a max display refresh rate of 120 hertz, so the picture on the display can refresh up to 120 times per second. So animations and scrolling are going to look a bit smoother and snappier on the Pro iPhones. Now, it's very important to note that this is something that the average person isn't going to care that much about. Some people can't even notice the difference when being shown a 60 hertz and a 120 hertz phone side by side. Side. And of course, all iPhone 15 models this year now get the USB-C port, officially discontinuing Lightning, which is incredible as the iPhone now officially joins basically every other modern tech product in having USB-C. So you're now able to use the same cable to charge probably your laptop, other tech products, other types of phones that your friends or family might have, etc. Apple was forced to change the port from Lightning to USB-C by the EU, and I think this is a big win for everybody as we're now all going to be, for the most part, on the same page in terms of using the same cable. Regardless of which device you use. And in terms of processing power, the iPhone 15 Plus and the standard iPhone 15 are powered by the A16 chip. The new A17 Pro chip is exclusive to the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, but for average day-to-day -day activities, you are not going to notice any real difference between the speed and performance of the A16 chip versus the A17 Pro chip. The only time you might ever see a difference is in extremely processor intensive tasks like intense gaming, exporting or rendering video, and things of that nature, which you're probably not gonna be doing in your day-to-day -day life. So the speed and performance of the 15 Plus and the standard iPhone 15 are gonna be perfectly fine for your day-to-day -day activities. Even the A16 chip here packs way more power than you know the average person would ever need in a smartphone. And in terms of design changes between the standard tier iPhones and the pro tier iPhones, of course, other than the last of that telephoto camera lens on the standard iPhones. The 15 Plus here and the standard iPhone 15 feature aluminum sides, where the Pro models of the iPhone 15 feature titanium sides. Apple has made quite a big deal about the new titanium material in the 15 Pros, and it looks great. But other than aesthetics, it's not going to be a difference that's going to change your experience with the phone in any significant way. Also, the 15 Plus has the standard mute switch that we're all used to, where the 15 Pros have a new programmable action button that you can set to do a variety of things. The action button is a nice feature to have on the pros, but it's probably not worth the extra $300 in this case. So today we're going to be hitting the treadmill for an hour and I'm going to be streaming music from my iPhone 15 Plus here to my Bluetooth headphones for that entire hour just to kind of see how much battery consumption will occur during that time. We're currently sitting at 80%. And again, we'll check back in after the hour is complete. And we're streaming this music over a Wi-Fi connection here, by the way. And all right, checking in after an hour of music streaming over Bluetooth here. The phone's currently sitting at 78%. So only lost 2% during an hour of music streaming to Bluetooth headphones. So pretty good. But all right, we're going to head out of here, go grab a few things from the store, then head back to my apartment to order up some late night Uber Eats.
And a quick battery check now that I'm back at my apartment. We are currently at 77%. And considering, you know, everything we've put it through, you know, it hasn't been crazy, but it's been a decent amount. I'd say that's pretty good. You know, and I expect nothing less out of the 15 plus here uh, with the size of the battery that it has. So I'm just gonna hit the showers real quick. And then after that, we're gonna order up some Uber Eats. And all right, let's order up that Uber Eats because I could go for some New York City pizza right about now. And of course, now that the Dynamic Island is on the 15 plus, you get the live activities right there in the island. So you can get, you know, ETA or just progress on whatever activity that you're doing, as long as it supports, of course, the live activity feature. Of course, as always, you get the live activities in your uh, cover sheet area as well, but Again, it's also in the island now, which is nice. But anyways, while I waited for my Uber Eats, I read some emails and scrolled around on Twitter for about five minutes. Then I watched about four minutes of YouTube with my Bluetooth headphones connected before my order arrived. And next up, as requested by you guys, I'm gonna include a 20 minute FaceTime call in this test. Now, as much as this test is, you know, supposed to be real world, I obviously don't wanna, you know, expose anyone's identity. So I'm just gonna do a test FaceTime call with another iPhone that I have here. And we're just gonna go for 20 minutes just to kind of simulate uh, how much battery consumption that's going to consume. That's mainly the reason we're doing this is just to take a look at the battery uh, levels. And by the way, we're at 73% going into the FaceTime call. And checking in after exactly 20 minutes of that FaceTime call being active, we're sitting at 68%. So a 5% drop after 20 minutes of FaceTime, which is not bad at all. But anyways, I've still got around four hours of work to do. It's gonna be a late night as usual. And just like earlier in the coffee shop, I did use my phone a little bit throughout this time working. I watched around 15 minutes of YouTube with my Bluetooth headphones connected, and I browsed around social media for 15 minutes as well. And all right, so calling it a night it is very late. Uh, final battery check right now. The device is at 64%. So very impressive considering, you know, going through a whole day of, you know, continuous usage, normal usage for it to be well above the 50% mark, I think is very impressive. I expect nothing less though out of a device with this large of a battery. Also taking into consideration how well it did in my battery test that I just uploaded recently. Um, phenomenal battery life on this device. And here's my battery breakdown for the day. Uh, you can see here three hours, 21 minutes of screen on time. That's about average for me. I mean, it fluctuates between like three hours to four and a half hours, depending on the day for me on average. You know, I'm definitely not a power user by any means, but in terms of the things that consumed the most battery performance throughout the day, you can see here maps. You know, I did use a decent amount of GPS throughout this video. You can see also that FaceTime call, even though it was only 20 minutes, I did consume a decent amount of battery life. And also the camera, even though I didn't use the camera for a ton, you could see it did take a significant hit. You could see there Twitter, Instagram, and Spotify all consuming about the same amount of battery performance, give or take a little bit, um, and some other tasks below that. So overall takeaway here, stellar battery life once again on this device. I mean, to be at 63%, you know, after everything that we used it for throughout the day, I think that's very impressive. Again, I'm definitely not like a crazy power user, but if you are a more, you know, heavy power user, you can apply this type of, you know, math to your own usage and you'll probably see that it'll be great battery life for you as well. It's all relative to an extent. So guys, in conclusion, this is a fantastic iPhone. And if you're looking for an iPhone that's under a thousand dollars that has the large 6.7 inch display, you're probably gonna love this device. The only thing left to be desired about this device for me and probably a lot of you is a 120 hertz display refresh rate. The standard tier iPhones still don't have that. They have a 60 hertz display refresh rate, but it's not a deal breaker. And honestly, you don't need a display refresh rate higher than 60 hertz. It's nice to have, it definitely makes the display and the device feel snappier, but it's just that, it's a nice to have feature. And honestly, the average person is not gonna care about this whatsoever. And honestly, I don't even really care about it that much. Like I'm able to switch between devices with 120 Hertz to 60 Hertz without a problem. There's a little bit of an adjustment there, but you know, I adjust very quickly and so would you if you had to. So that in consideration with most people don't even really care or wouldn't even notice, this phone's fantastic. And I honestly have no issues at all recommending this to anyone who wants a large screened device. You know, Apple did a great job, as I said earlier this year, with making the standard tier iPhones 
feel very premium and you know very new and similar enough to the pro devices that there's really not a whole lot of a need to go up to a pro tier iPhone at this year. You have USB-C, you have the dynamic island, you have the new design that's a little bit more curved that feels a little bit, you know, softer in the hand. This phone has more than enough processing power for the average person. The camera is gonna be, you know, more than enough quality for the average person. And it's gonna last for many years. It's gonna get software update support for many, many years as, you know, all new iPhones do. And guys, that just about wraps it up for this video. I hope this was helpful to you, or at the very least, just entertaining. Thank you so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.